So let's let's see. I've got a wee bit of time. I want to do uh, uh, one more thing. Indeed, about putting things in order. Um, so here we've got uh, a little a little puzzle for you. I'm glad it fits um, fits on the screen. Okay. So one of the things we'll spend a lot of our time doing in this class is working with. Uh, circuit diagrams uh, where uh, we think of information as flowing in at the top, flowing in at the top and out at the bottom. So from information flows from top to bottom, <coughs> components will have some inputs and some outputs. And here's a very simple component. Its job is to sort two things. So let's so let's call the two things that come in, x and y, and the two things that come out, low and high. So what I'm saying in this specification is the set of things that comes out is the same as the set of things that goes in. <coughs> However, <coughs> low is definitely less than or equal to high. So that's to say, this box gets two inputs. If they're not already in the right order, it swaps them. Right? Okay. So here's a little puzzle for you. Uh, if you wanted to sort two, uh, if you want to sort four inputs, given that you can sort two at a time, you want to sort of wire up a bunch of these boxes together uh, to sort um, to sort four inputs. How many of the boxes do you think? I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. If you want to scribble something on your one minute papers, uh, that would be terribly useful. Uh, well, have, a wee, have a wee think about it, and then we'll use our, our filters uh, to, to vote. I'm not asking you to pull out. We'll, we'll see, yeah. But you think it, so you think eight are needed? Uh, well, you're wrong. You do the fewer. Um, um, it's definitely one of the answers, right? I'm done with the trick questions, right? But by the way, if I, um, uh, I, don't, I don't make deliberate mistakes. I make plenty enough accidental mistakes not to do them on purpose. Uh, so if you see something that's wrong, uh, wrong, uh, fix it. So it could be, that, of course, that I've, the question looks confusing. Uh, but uh, if the question means what I think it means, then the answer is one of these. <laughs> so, that's to say, the decimal numbers on the right, not the hexadecimal digits on the left. <laughs> so, right. Uh, Okay, so uh, you can see your um, your pilchard has um, has got some letters on the back. If you if you choose the letter that corresponds to the answer you want to you give, and if that's the one at the top, then uh, hold them up and um, uh, I will. Uh, uh, so are you ready? Right. So make sure that the actual image, the, the, the little kind of QR code like thing, right? The, le the, the letter co a cor that corresponds to your answer should be facing you so that the code is facing me. Okay? And then what I do is I scan the room with this amazing piece of technology. And. And then I confess that I'm actually just looking at the diagrams. Uh, it's fake. 
Uh, but the, this technology really works, just not when I do it. Uh, uh, but I'm seeing quite a mixture of answers here. Uh, I can tell what you're holding up. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so if you think you're right, well, why don't you find someone nearby you who disagrees with you? And uh, maybe you've already, maybe maybe you've already done a bit of that. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, see if you can come to a bit more of a consensus by making a large amount of in the room. again to see whether that process produced a difference. Right. What do you think now? Could they come in jumbled up? Four things. Uh, well, think about it. We were, so that's not a deadly phone call. That's just a, the ten-minute warning to remind me to shut up and get off. Four, um, right. four factorial. There's four choices for the first one. Three choices for the next. How many is four factorial? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Right. Now, each one of these boxes makes a choice. Swap or not, it generates one bit of information. And to put things in the right order, you have to figure out what order they're in in the first place. So, if we're trying to unjumble from 24 possible different orders, is three bits of information going to be enough? That would only give us eight, that would only allow us to detect eight different possibilities. Similarly, four bits would give us only 16. Now actually the four bit system is in very common use in tournaments, right? It's not unusual in a competition to have two semi-finals, yeah? And then you send the winners from the semi-finals into the final. And if you're something like the World Cup, you'll send the losers from the semi-final into the third, fourth playoff. And then the winner of the third, fourth playoff will get the bronze medal. Uh, and the point is that sometimes uh, that's, that's not entirely fair. Um, let's suppose we actually just feed in the numbers one, two, three, four. Right, that's to say, we've got two good teams in one semi-final and two rubbish teams in the other semi-final. Then we've got one and two coming out here, three and four coming out there. We've got two plays four in the final. And we've got one plays three in the playoff. And even though we started with the things in order, we've finished off with them out of order. Uh, so, for, in this case, this arrangement wasn't enough, and we just checked. Four would only allow us to detect 16 different patterns, so four is not going to be enough. We can tell that the way the World Cup tries to rank the teams at the end is just hopelessly not going to work. Isn't that great? On the other hand, we can see 
that we're definitely going to get the winner, right? Because the biggest number of all is definitely going to win its semi-final, end up in the final, and, uh, and win the final too. So this 4 is definitely correct. Similarly, the worst of all is going to lose its semi-final, end up in the playoff, and lose the playoff too. So that 1 is correct. The only two places that might be wrong, it's the, the allocation of, of silver and bronze that might not be quite right. So all we have to do is fix, to fix it is to stick another box there, and then they'll come out, uh, if I can remember which number is which, in the correct order. So it takes five sort boxes. And you can tell five sort boxes would distinguish between 2 to the 5, that's 32 possibilities, which is indeed enough to tell the 24 apart. And you can see from this arrangement that in practice it's enough. So you can, you're learning that you can start to analyze things in terms of how much information is needed, how much information is generated. And you're also learning that different patterns of coding mean different things. Now, what I suggest that you do, given that it's time to stop, is that you fill in your one-minute papers. I suggest you hang on to your filters. You might use them again. And if you can leave your one-minute papers in these boxes as you exit, um, see if you put them away, you're doing the wrong thing. Keep them out and scribble on them all during the lecture. So these we will scan. You will see these pieces of paper again digitally. Uh, uh, so at least use your three-word code uh, to let me know you were here. If you suddenly can't remember your three-word code, just write your name and I'll fix it. Um, and let's be on our way.